Good evening, Pioneer fans, and welcome in to Episode 7 of the Pioneer Coaches Show. Today's Thursday, October 22nd, 2020. Today, I'm joined by the head women's golf coach of the Lady Pioneers, Coach Mike McGarry. Coach, thanks for taking the time to sit down with us. Thank you. Coach, um, we're going to get right into it. Um, we're going to hit on a lot of different stuff uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout this uh, interview. First off, um, you know, some people might notice when they go to the, to the website and look at the roster, Kendall Wall, the uh, former... Uh, MEC Freshman of the Year. She's not on the roster. It's not a, a complete, um, it's not a set in stone that she might not return. Correct. Um, but talk a little bit about Kendall, about kind of, you know, if you have to replace her, your your thoughts of maybe if you could get her to come back, kind of kind of go through that, let people know what she's doing right now. So so she took the uh, the semester off due to COVID. There was COVID concerns. The other thing she was working on is, and she contacted me back in July, she said she was seeing a golf instructor down in Houston, who works with a lot of PGA Tour tour players, so she was really trying to focus in on honing in her skills, developing her her, her uh, the quality of her game and upping it, and also getting to the next level. That was her big concern. Now, last week I did have a, shared several text messages messages with her and her mom, and um, it's up in the air right now. She's she's seriously thinking about coming back in the spring. We we, we would love to have her back. I don't know if you could re replace somebody like that. <laughs> Work ethic was phenomenal. The golf talent was phenomenal. Let's look now um, at the rest of your returners. <clears throat> you got, I mean, you got a handful of returners and a handful of newcomers, so it's a really good balance. Um, but some of the returners, uh, you got Kira Bauer, yes, Darian Kelly, uh, Jenna Jenna Bertoloni, Elena McCallop, and Madison Uranga. Talk a little bit about those returners, what they bring. Um, to the course and your kind of your expectations for them now when they get to to play competitive golf okay. again. This is this is pretty simple. So last year was year one. It was new. I had kids from all over the country. They're away from their parents. It was it was kind of a hard situation. Right. We've uh, we've set the expectations. The expectations have been met. They're being met and improving every day. This past week, we I took the ladies down to Pipe Stem and we went over to the Greenbrier. Kira Bauer and McCalp have never broken a hundred. They bro broke a hundred both days. Um, in regard to Jenna Bertolone, she was she was still in quarantine, so she did not make the trip. Um, who else we got there? Madison Naranga. Madison Naranga was on the team last year, couldn't play. Right. But shoots 88 at Pipestem, shoots 85 at Greenbrier. So the numbers are there. The, the the numbers are coming down. They're getting competitive. They're right where we need to be to have a competitive a competitive team. Talking about that, you kind of took my next question. Getting to play at Pipestem in the Greenbrier. Um, you guys went and played uh, that just recently. Talk a little bit about that, what that experience was like for, for not just you, but the girls. Well, it, it was great. It was very positive because we're sitting here. Well, first of all, we're practicing every day. Then we get hit with the, with the COVID. Right. So we hit two weeks of quarantine. So I'm sending golf videos via Instagram. <laughs> Start doing this inside the room. <laughs> uh, who knows what they were doing? That. Apparently they were doing it because the yeah. scores were good. But anyways... Um, it, it was very challenging. So to I took the girls away. I was I was going to take them away to Glade this weekend, but the hurricane's coming up right. like rain. I'm not wasting my time with that. Let's keep it fun. So we go to Pipe Stem, and I'll tell you what a what a very positive experience. What a phenomenal facility. And then of course Sunday morning you drive over to the Greenbrier. I mean, does it get any better than yeah. the Greenbrier? My my lord. Yeah, it's, it, both of them are special places. They are. They are. Let's look at the newcomers. Um, you've got a handful of newcomers, and we've talked before off camera about how kind of excited you've been about yeah. the recruiting class and, and, and kind of what went into getting these these young ladies: uh, Emily Barr, Elizabeth Hare, uh, Delaney Lore, uh, Brianna Morgan, uh, Lindsay Taller, Carly Iranga, Libby Ward. Talk mm -hmm. a little bit about this recruiting class and your expectations for them when you guys get to hit the course. It's it's top to bottom completely different. There's high talent. And then developing talent. Well, let's start with Emily Barr. So Emily Barr, I meet Emily last winter, and I gave her golf lessons. And, and I use Emily as an example. And, I, and I'm not knocking the young lady. This, she really put put. She's a lunch pail type of girl coming to work. Struggling to hit, make good contact. So she's sending me texts all summer, and she's showing me golf swings. And when she, when she showed up on campus, I'm like, Who are you? I mean, it, it was you could see the, the work was put in. It was great. 
Then we look at Ellie Hare. So I, I got Ellie Hare to sign probably uh, August 1st. She was a latecomer. She's from Utah. We just played the uh, Glenville Club Championship. She shoots 73 the first day. She shoots 80 the next day. I played it with her both days. In the 80s, should have been 75. Two metal mistakes. Tons of talent. Delaney Lohr it has huge upside. Hits it a mile. Ha has a homemade swing. We're trying to, you know, change some um, some of her setup to make it to, to, for better results. Then we have Brianna Morgan. Brianna is an uh, is, a, is an interesting girl. She's developing, but on, outside of golf, there might not be a better student on campus. Seriously, the, the young lady is involved with all sorts of um, land resource projects and, and so forth, and she's very you know very well integrated at, in Charleston. Um, Rebecca Sigalski is an interesting story. I've been following Rebecca since the day I was hired, and I finally met her last year. She's never taken a golf lesson. In, in high school, she was shooting 80 to 85, 86 usually in high school without a golf lesson. I had her on the course earlier this year, alignment issues. But once we straighten that out, the ball's flying straight, the scores were coming down. Uh, Lindsay Toller, I believe she's from Braxton County over here in the yeah. Flatwoods, hits it a mile. Ton, tons of potential. She'll be... She'll be if she puts the time in, her scores will be in the, in the high 80s, okay? Carly Angaro is from Poland, Ohio. Carly is, is, is an interesting story from the standpoint I call her mini Herschel Walker. She's, <laughs> she, swims, she swims three miles a day. Oh, my goodness. She's just completely <laughs> jacked up with muscles, and she's, she's not the tallest-looking you know, specimen, if you will, but she's like packed like dynamite, and she hits at 250 yards. So she, there's tons of talent there. And lastly is Libby Ward. Libby's from Utah. Libby might have as much talent as Kendall Wall. The, she's 5'8", five, 5'9", five, hits at about 260. When she visited, she was hitting it past me. So, and I don't hit it that short either. So, <laughs> the, the talent is here. The next recruiting class I'm trying to bring in is going to be as good or better. Things are happening in the right direction. I really chose Glenville State College because I found out from so many different people how encouraging and supportive the staff was here in the Land Resources Department. I also knew and have experienced now just how hands-on this program is. I have just really been able to learn as much as possible through all the opportunities here. I chose GSC because of the close, small-knit community here at campus and the chance to excel in the honors program here. Some people might notice this, that when, but when they go and look at the roster, I think you've got three girls now from the state of Utah. Yeah, yeah. Talk a little bit about, you know, getting those girls, because, I mean, anybody that knows, you, you know, the United States geographically, it, it's, not a, it's not a hopscotch from, from Utah to West Virginia. So talk a little bit about, you know, getting those girls to commit from Utah all the way, you know, coming here to, to West Virginia. I don't want to. Because if I let it out, other coaches see it. <laughs> oh, that's very, that, that's a very, okay. But no, I'll, I'll kid But let's aside. talk about your connection right, with, so, with the state of Utah. How about that? All right, so the, I originally landed Kira Bauer last year. And I said, Kira, I, I'm looking at your high school scores. And I, where are these girls going to college? Because I pulled up all the colleges. I can't, no one's going to college and playing golf. So I made a contact with, with a gentleman, Blair Garner, at Southern Virginia University. And Blair and I have kind of become friends. Blair's from Utah. And had no idea. So he invites me out. Of course, I couldn't go out due to COVID, so he's sending me all the contact information. So I started reaching out to Utah, and now we have a pipeline going out there. And I, I, I fully expand it. It seems to be going well, pretty well. Yeah, I mean, expand on it, make it even bigger. We were talking earlier before we started uh, the interview um, about, you know, because <clears throat> golf was here. It was, it was started around 2006, 2007 as a varsity sport. Then it had about a two-year hiatus, and then you came in. And it's really, really grown. Um, talk a little bit about, you've also mentioned to me about, about a club aspect yep. and kind of making Global yep. State College maybe like a, a golf destination Absolutely. Um, for golfers. Talk a little bit about that and, and kind of how you're kind of incorporating that plan and how you want to move forward. All right, so, so what I've uncovered the last year when I was recruiting, a lot of girls are, are scared of coming to college and feeling like they're under a 40-hour-a-week job of hitting golf balls, and there's too much pressure from golf not to get to the academic side. There's still a lot of women, young ladies, in this country who love the golf, who, but they don't want to do it competitively. competitively. Why not set up a golf club? I mean, we got a nine-hole course right here, two blocks from campus. We can still use Stonewall. 
and, 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 and from that standpoint, give the, the young ladies who are, still want to be competitive in golf an opportunity for a great education at Glenville. And also, they'll be playing two tournaments in the spring, two tournaments in the fall. That's what I'm looking at. And, and just, just you know, hearing that idea and thinking about that, you know, you may get a young lady that maybe she doesn't feel comfortable playing competitive golf, but after she puts a year in and sees, and sees what, what is, you know, hey, maybe maybe this is doable. I mean, you you basically got your own. It's a farm system. Yeah, you it basically is. got your own farm system yep. right here. Yep. Um, talk a little bit about COVID and, and how, you know, I mean, it's challenging for everybody, every coach. It is. But. but our athletes, and especially athletes, they're such creatures of habit. And you guys should be playing competitive golf right now. Um, looking forward to that to that that conference championship here coming up um, in October. So talk a little bit about how you're keeping the girls focused and, and keeping them positive and saying, hey, it's difficult right now, but when we get to play again, we're going to be the best that we can be when we're on that course. That's a great question. It, it has been very, very challenging. Uh, right, the, ironic enough, the week before the COVID hit, we set up a week of, of uh, matches. So what I did was I paired certain players off of certain talent, played two matches and had the championship, and then we, we flooded the two different, you know, higher level quality developing talent, and that's what we did. And, and of course, COVID hit, so that ceased, to, right. ceased right there. But we'll get back at it. So then prior to getting back at it, took the girls the pipes down to Glade, or excuse me, the Greenbrier, and then we were supposed to go to Glade, Rain, no good, so we'll get back at it next week. Matches again. Every week we're going to do matches and spend more time at Stonewall. Right now the greens at Stonewall, I, I was told, they're running about 11 or 12 on the stint meter, which is like the, as smooth as this tabletop. Yeah. Yeah, so we're, we're just going to uh, up the pressure, if you will. We were talking, because I always need help with my golf game. It, it's all we are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can always improve. But you were telling me uh, – that's something you've been working on with the girls, which is very, very interesting, is chipping around the green yeah. with a hybrid. Yes. Talk a little bit about that and kind of you know, <clears throat> where you came up with that and kind of how it, it's transitioned to, to, to having the girls now actually practicing it. it. It's interesting. So when I was caddying on tour, Dan Olson over at the, at the uh, British Senior Masters, or the British Senior Open, excuse me, was using a hybrid. I said, Danny, what are you doing? He says, try it. He says, in, in Scotland, you have a lot of, greens that are pushed up with false fronts he says you can't chunk it you want to get the ball on the ground rolling and it just rolls better than a, than a putter so I started trying it and I brought it back here holes holes five left of the green yeah. hole six uphill and it's phenomenal and even hole seven and eight depending on where you are over here at, at, uh, at Glenville what, it, what happens is with the hybrid you can't chunk it now your worst hybrid stroke is going to be better than your worst chip with a wedge or a nine iron or a seven iron so uh, we've implemented that and got girls doing it as a matter of fact Delaney Lord the Greenbrier did it off the green and couldn't believe the success she had it was pretty interesting yeah, that's, yeah. that is very very interesting yeah. so I, I can tell you my next uh, next round of golf I'm definitely going to try that now now we got golf out of the way we're going to let the Pioneer fans get to know Coach McGarry okay okay so if there was one sport <clears throat> other than golf that you could see yourself coaching what would it be and why? I would coach. I would coach. I would coach special teams and football. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I'll tell you what I think, and, I, and I've said this to all my friends. We go to high school football games back home. I would rush eleven guys every time, and not even put anybody back. Put the pressure on the punter. Yeah, I mean, I've I've heard of some people talking about doing that because. I mean, the worst case scenario, the ball is going to be inside the ten, inside the five, right. but they, they can't get the ball back if there's so that that okay. So, I like putting pressure right. well, on I'll, people. I'll put that uh, I'll put that bug in Coach Keller's ear. Yeah, that, and maybe thanks. maybe if you, he he's got an opening for special teams, he'll players. be pounding on my door. <laughs> don't ever do that again. <laughs> um, so let's say you're sitting at home. Say it's a Monday night. Um, there's no there's no golf on, so you can't watch golf. You've got Major League Baseball, the NFL, and the NBA going on. Which which one are you tuning tuning into? Well, the Oakland A's. Okay, absolutely. So, Moneyball. Okay. Are you Money kidding ball. me? Okay, all it's right. all percentages. Major percentages League. with golf, is it not? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pizza, hot or cold? Hot. hot. Okay. Cats or dogs? Greyhound dogs. Greyhound dogs. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, most used social media outlet? Facebook. Facebook. Okay, that's. 
we've had a really wide variety of that. I think every coach has been been pretty much different. We've had a lot of Twitter, a lot of Instagram, some Snapchat, and a lot of Facebook. So it's yeah, the other one would be I, I, on Instagram. I send a lot of golf videos. I subscribe oh. to Mike Bender, who teaches all the tour players. So I send a lot of those to the to the ladies on the golf team. Yeah. So either one. Favorite club to use during during a round of golf? Driver. Driver. I think that would be mine. So, but, but hey, you might not know where it's going. But the reason the reason is is everybody loves to hit driver, and you only hit it fourteen times at the most in a round of in golf. The, I was gonna say it's it's one of the least used clubs probably yeah. in, in your round of golf. It so. is. But the reason most people want to bang driver is to rip it. Rip it three hundred yards. I love hitting two fifty. Yeah. If you do the math, you only have the seven or eight yards yeah. into the green. Yeah. Yeah. Last question, and we'll let you go. If there was one hashtag. That you could live your life by, what would it be and why? Refuse to lose. Refuse to lose. Yeah. And it explains itself. Yeah, refuse to lose. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Well, Coach, again, thanks for sitting down and, and Thank talking you. a little bit. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, Pioneer fans, that's going to do it for Episode 7 of the Pioneers Coaches Show. Once again, I would like to thank uh, Jake Zimmer from Pioneer Media. I'd like to thank uh, Coach McGarry, the head coach of the uh, Lady Pioneers golf team. For myself, Jonathan Griffin, Global State Athletics, we will see you guys next week.